ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ವಿದ್ಯಾಪೀಠ ವಿಧಾತಾರಂ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಾರಿಧಿ ಚಂದಿರಂ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ವತ್ಸಲಂ ವಂದೇ ಮಹಾಮಹಿಮ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಪ್ರಥಮೋ ಹನುಮನ್ ನಾಮ ದ್ವಿತೀಯೋ ಭೀಮ ಎವ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞ ತೃತೀಯಸ್ತು ಭಗವತ್ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಸಾಧಕ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ದ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ಅಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಧ್ವನೌಮಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡೇ a few thousands of years back madhvacharya entered the lotus feet of the supreme being on the great auspicious occasion of vijayadashmi lord vayudeva took the incarnation of a small boy vasudeva on this earth to preach the great madhva philosophy from the previous parts we have been learning the story of vasudeva his childhood his gurukul life and how he entered the holy order of sanyasa ashrama in the previous part we learned how vasudeva by taking the permission from his parents madhegeha bhatta and vedavati devi entered the holy embodiment of sanyas ashrama he got the embodiment titled purna bodha tirtha by his guru achuta preksha tirtha swami ji the name purna bodha it appropriately fits vasudeva because buddha means knowledge purna bodha which means the complete knowledge of each and everything not just complete complete and accurate knowledge of the supreme being hence purna bodha tirtha the name given to vasudeva was completely appropriate vasudeva irrespective of his age showed extreme merit showed intellectual skills and extreme respect to his guru achuta preksha tirtha swami ji today in the end of fourth saga we learned many verses which explains the intellectual skills of vasudeva achuta preksha tirtha swami ji wanted his disciple purnabodha tirtha to be fit for the seat of knowledge for the great peetha uttaradi math parampara so very much anxiously and with all eagerness and enthusiasm he decided to teach one of his one of the works ishta siddhi which is one of the works of five siddhi works of advaita so achuta preksha tirtha swami ji decided to teach ishta siddhi to vasudeva the very first shloka very first verse caused a hurdle achita preksha tirtha slightly neglected it and tried to move forward to the next shloka but vasudeva wouldn't leave it behind in the very first verse itself vasudeva he raised a total of 32 objections and the entire sabha the entire crowd was waiting for achuta preksha tirtha swami ji to answer it achuta preksha tirtha's replies were quite evasive and vasudev and purnabodh tirtha didn't find it satisfactory now it has become a challenge to vasudeva to purnabodh tirtha to clear all the objections purnabodh tirtha didn't hesitate even a little bit simply he bowed to the feet of his guru achuta preksha tirtha swami ji he gained his permission and explained all the 32 objections raised by him in a very clear and evasive manner the whole crowd was stunned because madhvacharya haven't even seen the work till now not even read it but still he explained the advaiti work ishta siddhi in a very clear and appropriate manner thus purna pragna gained full command over the audience and began his discourse since then uninterruptedly there was no one to interrupt him and we must observe that from this we get to know the qualities of a learned of an experienced teacher and the method of his teaching the method of his discourse because it was a great wonder for everyone because politically physically vasudev purnapragna was a small boy a small boy aged just simple 8 years 
but he was a starter a beginner but leaving behind everything he was discussing so fluently the subject which he haven't even seen till now and learning it was completely impossible such was the intellectual skills exhibited by purna pragna even in a very small age people assembled in great crowds in great numbers just to hear the discourses lent by vasudeva one we must one thing we must completely get in mind vasudeva no was not just simply given discourses in front of laymen there were many people who were who were completely pandits who were completely knowledgeable in their own fields all such people all such intellectuals they themselves were very much eager to learn something from vasudeva they felt there was something which they could learn from vasudeva there was something which they could get to know more from purna pragna tirtha all these qualities of discourse were a fortunate of our madhvas of our madhvacharya's greatness and the future author of the great bhashya written by him here the fourth sarga ends by exhibiting the extreme intellectual skills uh, uh, shown by purna pragna tirtha the main lesson what we learn from this chapter is madhvacharya simply shown showed this what is that if you are learned then teach if you are not then learn but the way there is no other alternative to gain knowledge if you are already learned then impart the knowledge to others if you are not then imbibe the knowledge from others thus madhvacharya places education and study above all the aspects when mainly teaching still higher in madhva tradition study and teaching they are up to a great level and teaching they take precedence over any other religious discipline we all know madhvacharya is the third incarnation of vayudeva the first one is lord hanuman and the second one is lord bhima thus in Mad- thus in the incarnation of madhvacharya vayudeva exhibited truly magnetic personality possessing fine physical features as well as fine intellectual skills combined with powers making him the greatest of all souls making him the jivottama do madhvacharya was a sanyasi he simply didn't live a he simply didn't lead a uh, some some simple life he simply didn't preach some meaningless or some stupid ascetic ascetism he lived a life of great order and high thinking it is said that narayana pandita acharya the third youngest son of trivikrama pandita acharya was around 15 years of age when purna pragna tirtha when madhvacharya departed in 1317 so it was possible for him actually to witness the victories the vijayas the glories of acharya in many other debates madhvacharya always stood on his word he always stood on his word the sumadha vijaya which is a composition of 1008 stanzas which is equally divided uh, respectively into 16 sarga 16 cantos and this number 1008 it is very much significant in our madhva tradition even today today actually it, uh, it is a auspicious occasion of madhva navmi everyone a ceremonial parayana or recitation of sumadha vijaya is considered very much efficacious very much auspicious and the daily parayana of sumadh vijaya which brings us to very much glory and victory and it gives us the same punya as to the parayana of some mahabharata or ramayana this poem is also considered as a mahakavya achuta preksha tirtha swami ji gave the title anand tirtha to purna pragna tirtha to vasudeva why did he chose the title anand tirtha ananda means happiness in simple terms so what can we say was uh, was purna pragna tirtha simply living a joyful life a luxurious life no ananda tirtha which means it resembles that 
पूर्ण प्रज्ञ तीर्थ वॉज द रीजन ऑफ आर हैप्पीनेस ही वॉज द वन हू वुड गिव अस हैप्पीनेस हेन्स ही वॉज गिवेन द एम्बॉडिमेंट आनंद तीर्थ स्वामी जी बुद्धिस्ट लाइक बुद्धि सागर वादि सिंह दे वर अनेबल टू विस्टैंड द ग्लोरी ऑफ मध्वाचार्य दे ट्राई टू दे ट्राइड इन ऑल वेज पॉसिबल टू डिफीट मध्वाचार्य बट मध्वाचार्य ही कॉर्नर देम कंप्लीटली इन एटीन वेज दे कुडेंट इवन कम आउट इन एनी वे पॉसिबल इट वॉज नॉट इट वॉज वेरी मच नैचुरल दैट आर एल्डर्स लाइक प्रॉफिट्स फादर आर गुरु दे शेर टीयर्स ऑफ जॉय एट दिस रिपीटेड सक्सेस वंस इट सो हैपन अच्युत प्रेक्ष तीर्थ स्वामीजी एंड मध्वाचार्य वर हैविंग वर हैविंग टुगेदर हैविंग अ डिस्कशन अमॉंग दैम सेल्स अच्युत प्रेक्ष तीर्थ ही वॉज अबिट स्लाइली सजेस्टेड सजेस्टेड पूर्ण प्रज्ञ तीर्थ टू सिंपली नॉट simply not uh, pick ho- holes or mistakes in the advaita system rather he should write out his own preach he should he should write out his own philosophy madhvacharya immediately accepted this suggestion actually he one thing we should see here is achata preksha tirtha simply didn't give it as a suggestion he actually challenged madhvacharya in a in a in, in one or other way but as we all know a swan a hamsa takes only pure milk would only drink pure milk and leave away the water the same way madhvacharya also simply took the suggestion from it which was a mixture of both but madhvacharya ignored the questionable aspect of the remark but simply he took the good part of it and accepted to compose the bhashya from this decision itself today we are able to learn the bhashyas composed by madhvacharya not just uh, achyuta preksha tirtha swami ji on an on an another occasion another yati belonging to a likucha family he also suggested purna prakna tirtha in an assembly that he should compose commentaries on other texts on other sutras madhvacharya even accepted it wholeheartedly and he composed the same way he received many challenges from the whole country side and promised all of them that soon he would bring out the complete interpretation of all our shastras and and criticisms to the other sutras also madhvacharya first chose bhagavad gita and wrote a commentary to it and named it as vishnupada pradarshini however he gave a copy of it to his guru and left to badri to seek the blessings from lord vedavyasa only then his work gita bhashya was published this is not at all any comparison to the work of madhvacharya by this the first section of this sarga is completed madhvacharya's style to the moonlight is compared it is significant that his writings give us the delight like the moon the moon though it gives us a great shine but with extreme delight and happiness to us the same way madhvacharya's works by reading one by one we find extreme delightness and we get to know the supremacy of the lord so today on this auspicious occasion of madhva navmi let us all recite sumadhvi jiya at least once or at least how many verses possible let us recite not only that let us learn let us try to know about madhvacharya at least a little bit part of it today and get to the path of heaven shown by him shri krishna arpanamastu